You know what, getting new gear is? It's an excuse to film easy content. Gear geeks love watching people unwrap gear, so this one's for you guys. Da -da -da -da. Hi guys, it's Summer, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, then welcome to the chaos. I do all things music related on this channel, from putting up covers and show reels to show people what I'm like as a performing artist if they want to book me, to my favourite kind of content, production and songwriting style content, which will often also include some audio engineering content, and my favourite type of audio engineering content, for obvious reasons, is the really easy stuff where I just buy new gear and then I make a video where I open up the boxes and show you the new gear and we can all marvel at the lovely new gear. So in my recent video that I did, just going over all of the things that changed in my home studio setup over the last year, I uh, mentioned that the only thing gear-wise that I hadn't gotten yet that was really important that I needed to get to really make this a usable space for mixing was a pair of proper studio monitors. I've basically been mixing in exclusively off headphones up until this point because I got the piece of advice that until you've sorted out a good space, put in some basic acoustic treatment of any sort, there isn't much point having good studio monitors. You could end up spending a lot of money on studio monitors that you can't really use to the best of their ability because they aren't in the right space to be able to actually get the frequency responses that you're supposed to get. Because the frequency response is one of the biggest, most important things when it comes to studio monitors, you know? You need good clarity across your bass, your mids, and your highs. If a set of speakers or headphones or whatever don't have that, if they're boosting certain frequencies, they're not including enough of certain frequencies, then you're not actually gonna know what's going on in your mix very well and then you'll come and play it on a different system and be like, hey, this is really boomy for some reason, or hey, it's really muddy. It wasn't really worthwhile investing a lot of money into studio monitors until I had invested time and money into the space I was gonna be doing all my mixing in. And that's what I spent most of last year doing. So monitors were kind of bottom of the list of things to buy for me because I knew that I had time to save up for them and make the decision on which ones I wanted. Now this required a lot of research, picking out the right model for me. And I was weighing up between two main options I was looking at. I was weighing up between the ones I've gone with, obviously the A7Vs, the Anim Audio A7Vs are the ones that I've gone with, but I was weighing them up alongside the HS series by Yamaha, which obviously is a much, much cheaper <laughs> model. I think the most expensive of the HS series, the HS 8s, uh, were about, it was gonna cost about five to 600 for two of them, whereas these are like 500 each. So this has obviously cost me quite a bit more than those would have. That was the one of the big differences between them was the price difference. The other big difference being in when I was asking people about what they thought about different models, I got nothing but good feedback about these. You know, people really did recommend them, both people who use them and the main reputable sources I like to go to for my reviews, specifically Sound on Sound magazine. I really trust what Sound on Sound magazine have to say about this sort of stuff. And the Adam Audio A series is their recommended one of the, of 2023. But with the HS8, someone who was using them had mentioned that they found that they had to check their bass responses on uh, another set of monitors in particular, that that was one of the things they found lacking about them. Overall, they were happy with the model as well, and I may well have been happy with the Yamaha HS8, based on what I was reading about both models, and based on the feedback I'd had from people about them, that it felt like I might outgrow the HS model quicker than I'm likely to outgrow these. Both these models, both the HS series and this model that I've gone with, the A7Vs, offer ways to alter the frequency responses of your monitors to the room. With these, there is a piece of software that you can actually use to really set the speakers up for your room. So that was one of the big things that really attracted me to them because obviously I have treated this space and it is more suitable a space for monitoring in than it used to be, but it's not perfect. One of the big, you know, one of the big difficulty, difficulties I'm gonna have is that ideally I would be more central in a room than I'm able to be in here. But yeah, it's not the ideal perfect space. And so having the option to be able to alter the settings on these monitors to help better fit them to the room is gonna be great for me because then as I adapt this room as well, I can redo the settings. And if I move into a different space in the future, they can probably come with me and sit well in that space too. Anywho, enough blabbering on. Let's get to the important bit of the video, the bit that everybody wants to see, the unboxing bit. So I went with Anderton's again, same as I did for my microphones that I got last time, because I was 
perfectly happy then. Plus they would, they do a, what's the word I'm looking for? They were doing a package deal that meant you could get the cables that you need to set up and um, the little foam supporty things that you want to put speakers on. Doing it a package like that was going to be cheaper than buying everything separately. They also did a deal where you could get stands instead of the foam thingies, but I'm going to, I'll talk about what I'm going to probably do in terms of sorting out speaker stands, but I'm going to do something myself for that. So I didn't want to buy stands and Unless that goes horribly wrong, in which case I might be buying stands. Ah! So that's what I'm sure is in this box, is the extras. This is a weird box as well. I'm not sure. I think the opening is going to be here. Oh, there's a little tearaway thing under the tape. But that's what it is. But I can't actually get to that tearaway thing because the tape is in the way. There we go. And it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't quite work that. This is the truly great bit, is watching me use a pair of nail scissors because I can't bother going and finding proper scissors. I mean, I'm glad they're making sure it's like package but at the same time that was a nightmare to get into cables so we got some nice xlr to jack cables there perfect and there is my foamy things me foams me foamy foams they got like an extra bit of foam there is like an extra bit of foam there is it or is that a bit that you need as well we're gonna have to actually open this up and see what we've actually got in there that right, box and get out of the way I'm gonna have to clear up all this cardboard and wrapping when I'm done here. That'll be less fun. Hey, they have got like little in-betweens. Are they actually for something, these little in-betweens? Ah, oh, it's for adding either more of an angle or an even thingy. That's what the extra bits are for. They are actually for something. Okay, I figured they would be because why would they just give you the off cuts? That would be weird, wouldn't it? All right, let's get them out of the way because they're not really that interesting, are they? <laughs> That's not the bit people wanna see. Okay. Let's start with this big boy. I've been wondering how much of the box is actually speaker and how much of it is the padding. Power cable, very necessary. Quick start guide. I already read this online. I had a quick look at the quick start guide. I'm gonna pop these up here so I don't end up accidentally stabbing myself with them. Am I gonna be able to lift this out of here or am I gonna have to? There we go. Oh, freak. All right, let's get that out of the way. I'm just casually piling up boxes towards the door. So if there were a fire in here right now, I'd be screwed. Let's get this sheet off you. Da 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 da! I gotta lift it up so you guys can see. Or I could just turn the camera, couldn't I? That would probably be easier. Da 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 da! Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? So we've got some of the uh, the room adaptation settings on the back here. I'll do some proper shots of it after everything's all set up. So you guys can have a look. You can change the amount of bass. This one's called desk. So I assume these are the sorts of frequencies that would get reflected off of your desk is what that means. I'm assuming that's what it's mentioning. Presence, that's quite often what people like to call those sort of mid high range frequencies and your treble. You can either boost them or attenuate them, except for the desk one. You can only either have that flat or attenuate it can't boost it. Why would you want to boost the desk frequencies? You probably wouldn't. How would you make that decision? Experience is one of the things really that you would need to properly make that decision. And it may be a good idea for me to get someone in this room at some point who is more experienced with mixing and being in, you know, studio spaces and knowing what good frequency responses really sound like. So they can sit down with me and we can listen to some stuff together and make decisions about which settings I might actually want. Right, let's get the other one out. <laughs> Things like this are always awkward when they're a little bit heavy as well because there's basically nothing to grab onto. Next step, get these up on the desk. Da 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 da! In private place on my mildly chaotic desk. Everything should be set up and connected, right? This is one I had mixed in the studio. And honestly, that is really similar to how it was sounding in the studio. Like, I don't think I'm going to need to do anything to that bass response. I'm going to mess with the desk one and see how that sounds. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? 
Now I don't know if once, because I am planning, my plan with these basically, is they aren't gonna sit directly on the desk like they are right now. You can see it's sitting on the desk and there's all sorts of stuff in front of it. Obviously this desk is not massive and the space I've got to play with, I don't wanna take away from desk space by having these speakers take up so much room. These guys are going to be put onto little wooden speaker stands, probably about about the height of my computer screen, maybe a little bit taller than that. Like the height the height of the computer screen is off the desk, sorry, not the height of the computer, but the height of the computer screen is off the desk or a little bit more than that maybe, just so they're lifted up. So they're about where the, that's gonna be about the right height. It, it might be that if I lift them off the desk a bit, I won't need to attenuate the desk setting in any way. But yeah, that is my plan, is to have little units under them, but mostly just so I have little a little storage area so that stuff can still be stored on the desk. Okay, I've just switched them off so I can do the end of the video bit now. But yeah, I have monitors now. I have speakers for my studio and they sound really good already, I'd say. So apparently the fact that they need eight hours to really settle in, be interesting to see what things sound like once they they've settled in and what choices I end up making in terms of any adaptations I want to make to the overall sound. I'm pleased that by sitting here, just listening to a few things off of them, just that track that I have been in a proper studio space to record. So I am very familiar with what that track sounded like in the studio. Obviously that was pre-mastering and stuff. So it's nice to sit and listen to that track now in this setting with these new speakers and feel like, yeah, that feels like what it felt like in the studio. So that's what we're aiming for, really, isn't it? We want, we want a setup that is like that. So yeah, I'm very happy with them already so far. <laughs> and if I do decide to actually connect them up with the ethernet cables and use the control, uh, the A control software, I will update you guys on that. If you would like to see other content like this and you know, any possible updates in the future, then obviously you can hit that subscribe button to join us here for future videos. Obviously that's quite a decision to make, so if you want to check out some of my other content beforehand, that is understandable, please do so. You can also follow me on my socials, which will probably be the best place for if you want to see updates when I put my little shelves and stuff in, how it all turns out. There'll be an outtakes video as usual for my Buy Me A Coffee members, which is linked in the description below as well if you'd like to check that out. A Buy Me A Coffee is basically like a Patreon, for those of you who don't know. Okay, that's all for this unboxing video. I shall see you guys next week with more fun music related content. Bye.